Hi, my name is Michiel Arendsen. I work for Renus ICT Services in the Netherlands. And I'm going to give you a short demo of the application we are building with Formstider currently. Okay, what you're looking at now is the landing page with on the left side your basic user menu. System configuration node. Here we can uh, define everything from users, groups, functions, uh, item level security, uh, forms, and some metadata we need to enter in order to have the application function the way we want to. So let's see if we can create a new form in our menu, assign it to a user and a group, uh, just to give a little example of how it works. Okay, uh, a new form. Let's say we call it, uh, this is the application, form code uh, AAA, test. And save this one. It shows up in the grid, and now we can assign some details. A menu entry, where does it need to show up? Under the main system configuration node. Um, which tenant is allowed to access the form? So let's see, Rebus ICT services. And now here we can select the groups of users which will have access. So a group, administrator group, and we are set to go. Save this one and refresh our menu. And it should show up here. Well, actually, it says no database key. It's a multi language application, so we need to add the test uh, as a translation. So, translation node, database translations, and translate this. So, new record, and this is an editable grid, so it just shows up in the grid. Test. Let's test and save this. So we added the key so it should be able to translate it. And now it just shows test. Oh, it won't be able to open because we haven't created the form, but you get the idea. Um, what else can we do? We can define some metadata for generic filter functionality to function. What you see here is a filter. So if I want to filter everything with an app, and everything is defined in the metadata as certain columns. So here you see which columns are in the data source and which forms are filtered on automatically. So everything with a star is filtered by default. And you, you can see here for this data source screen, the column name will be uh, the standard filter. Now we can, of course, configure this. I will clear the filter. Uh, go to the data sources form. Uh, data source, and here you see the four columns that were in this filter. So here I can look at the force part of data source name, it's out of search. That means it will be automatically queried when I enter something here. Uh, we have here, for example, an application menu. This is the default system menu, but you also can query a certain user, like this one, better. This user has a restricted menu, it just has access to several forms. And here are all user forms, so all the forms that specific user has access to. So you can configure his menu. Um, what else? Application, style sheets. Well, the whole application as you see here is uh, styled. Uh, 
by ourselves using CSS. And uh, on the start page, I can select another color scheme. It's predefined, but well, you get the idea. It changes everything, for example, for a red color scheme. Um, let's change this back into the default light blue. Uh, what else can we do here? These are our defined style sheets, and here are some utilities. Uh, you can go f a long way with defining certain standard functionality. Uh, once you have created the way your application should behave. So we have here uh, database utilities, like uh, maybe you know headshot utilities, uh, create a view with instead of triggers, uh, default translations and translate panels, uh, but also uh, generate a default database package for a form with standardized insert, update, delete procedures, uh, as well as master record changed uh, and all that. Uh, when, when, it, when I define a form, I can enter here some metadata, like which functions should be in the package when I say generate database package. So insert the data leads, pre-commit, uh, post-commit, post-tap active, There's, those are all form level triggers. Um, I build it because Formspider doesn't know a form or a screen, it just has panels uh, and uh, I, I want this, well, a bit of the same trigger behavior as Oracle Forums, that you can say, okay, I have a certain forum and I want to commit all panels, all data sources belonging to the forum. When I say save current top. Okay, what can we do here? Uh, the users, groups, functions, forum security. Uh, this is something we build every form uh, component you see can be restricted. Uh, you can restrict it in general or restrict it only for some groups. So I have here this new forum test. Well, it's empty because it doesn't exist yet. But let's say I have the data sources form we saw earlier. Um, and this data sources form has a top data source filters, which you can use to add. Uh, filters to a data source. Let's say I want to restrict that tab. I open it up, I look for the tab panels, and I say here, data source filters. I select it, and I say disable. Save this one. Uh, and now, once I open the data sources again, you'll find here that it is disabled. Great. Okay. Um, you cannot access it again. Well, I'll remove this. Okay, what else can we see here with the data sources? Um, some metadata which arranges the way uh, I can query the data source. I showed you before, I have the columns here which can be uh, queried by default or when I select a column I can query. It's a bit like the functionality you might know from Apex with the uh, interactive reports, something like that. I can configure the metadata here, say which uh, is auto search, which search type, uh, standard or advanced search a column can be queried in. An advanced search is a pop up screen you can open with every grid and have a structured query and select name. You get the idea. And you can build a query and you can save it or recall it later on and apply it to a data source. Also, we have here some Excel export settings, uh, which are used here in the export to Excel. It's again on every data source available. Uh, you can mark it as 
exportable, uh, move it to the top or to the bottom, uh, rename it, and then hit the button to Excel. Or save it. Like test, save. And later on, when I open it again, I will be able to reselect the settings. Okay, cool. I'll delete this. Yes. Okay, what else? Well, this is your basic user setup. Um, we also build a workflow uh, engine. Uh, the data, the forms you saw here are well mainly master detail, uh, master uh, grid with some detailed tabs. Uh, it's all window on data applications. Um, we also build a pale SQL workflow engine. <coughs> This screen is a bit more advanced to give you a feeling about how that might look. A single record on top. Um, so this is the master. Here you got a detail and this is a detail detail. So it's all it's two levels deep. What you can see here is the second level. But here are the activities. Activity transactions, deadlines, whatever. It's all used to well, create a workflow and it's automatically queried, etc. etc. This is a single record, so we can scroll through the records here, record by record, uh, and of course, create a new one. And it clears the whole bunch, and you can create a new record. Here. Delete this one, delete it. Yes. Okay, um, web configuration application that is used to grant our customers access to, for example, online booking system, tracking and tracing, etc. So here are the accounts, we call them web accounts. Uh, so there are some, some customers of us and these accounts all have their own uh, master data like addresses, for example. And you see edit screen again, same structure, it's a grid. You can edit in pop-up and have and you can scroll through the records here. Also, when I uh, mark a required field as required, if I make it empty and go to the next record, it says just like forms. All the required fields have uh, been entered. So you can recreate this single record, refresh it to have the original data back in the data, uh, in the record. So that's your basic uh, application structure. Hope you enjoyed it. Check it out on www.formspider.com. Download or just use the online ID and uh, have fun. Bye.